Hey, welcome to the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Well, if there's one thing big government tyrants don't like, that's guns. They they love gun control. It's There's a 100% correlation with the worst authoritarian dictators in, uh, in history and them trying to c- contain the types and strength of arms that the average citizen is allowed to have uh whether it's you know the dictators of the 20th century Mussolini and all those guys or if you even go back to to Braveheart Edward the Longshanks he forbid the Scots from having swords that's why they had to go into the battle of Stirling with a bunch of pitchforks and axes so it's it's nothing new you're used to it by now but we will fight this battle all day, every day. It will never go away. There will always be tyrants who want to disarm you, and you will always have to. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. You are always going to have to fight this battle. Well, Biden has an attempt to outlaw ghost guns. Are you familiar with this term, ghost guns? I, I feel like a lot of the pro-gun crowd, at least politically speaking, doesn't fall in the category of what I would call gun nuts. So I, I'm not going to assume you know this, but the Justice Department came up with this number. They said they've seized more than 19,000 ghost guns at crime scenes just in 2021 alone, and that this is a growing problem. They say it's, it's grown tenfold in just the last five years. Well, the way they say it, it makes it sound like ghost guns, some of which are homemade guns, are becoming a big problem, and they're being used in crime widely. Well, you got to be careful with that, because for some people, when they say ghost guns... Uh, DOJ looking at you. They just mean a gun that does not have the serial number on it. Now, a lot of people, you're not going to believe this, will take a gun with a serial number and they'll grind it off. Oh, no. So it's still commercially made. But it just doesn't have the serial number. So when you mix the information, when you mix the statistics on what constitutes a ghost gun, they act like they're going after these guys who are making homemade guns with a statistic that implies that these guns are being used widely in crime. However, the statistic has just an initial flaw that you don't know if they mean homemade guns or the ones that have the serial number scratched off. But you can probably imagine which one is more likely. So what happened there is the same thing that happened, uh, what was that, like a week, maybe two weeks ago, where Biden announced that he's closing the gun show loophole. There wasn't a bill that was proposed, and it went to a congressional committee, and the committee members debated it, added amendments, voted on it, got out of committee, then was presented to the full House, and the full House voted on it, and then it got sent to the Senate. They had to go through their committees, they had to vote on it, and then the two different bills had to go to a reconciliation committee and actually come up with another bill that would be reapproved by the House and Senate and then get signed by the president and then become law. No, we just skipped all that. Biden spoke it into existence. He dictated it into law without going through the proper legal channels. And now these are the the rules that can send you to prison. Okay, so right there, you know, there's some constitutional questions that we're all going to have with it. But besides that, even if he did go through with this, this is just another dubious attempt to find some way to restrict gun rights. Now, I remember the Second Amendment having this little shall not be infringed part on the end of it. And this is definitely infringement. But let's actually look at it pragmatically, because like the gun show loophole, it's attacking a problem that doesn't exist. Okay, because they'll say ghost guns, uh, the, the, the use of them has increased tenfold over the last ha- five years. And we found 19,000 of these ghost guns. OK, well, d- delineate for me. How many of these ghost guns were actually commercially, professionally, whatever you want to call it, made and just had the serial number scratched off versus how many of these were some dude who ordered a, a lower third or a receiver online and then puts the parts together home and he's you know got the drill press in his garage and it's a homemade sort of hobbyist gun scenario also i would like to see how many of these are 3d printed guns because again your suspicions are probably correct your in- instincts are probably correct in this the guys making ghost guns in their garage the 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 v- venn diagram of that population does not overlap very much with the population, the Venn diagram of the, the guys that are spraying bullets, the block party in Oak Cliff that shot nine people last weekend in our own backyard. 
the ghost gun folks overlap more heavily with the gun owners who stop crimes. You know, the, the gun nut people, the people that have a drill press in their garage, the people that actually know what a drill press is and why it would be useful in making a gun. These are the type of people who holster a gun and carry it into church. So when there's a mass shooting, you get stopped like the one at Joel Osteen's church a couple months ago or the, the guys who stopped the church shooting that was up here uh, in our neighborhood just a few years ago. The, the gun nut crowd, these people serve a purpose. It's like the, 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 the people, my friends that are animal nuts. And if you're an animal nut, I don't say that as a pejorative. I, like I have uh, two friends and their hobby is rescuing dogs. They will go to the worst neighborhoods in town. And if they see a dog that's emaciated and on a short chain in a yard, they will go rescue like these evil emaciated pit bulls, and nurse them back to health. Look, their passion for animals far exceeds yours and mine, but they serve a wonderful purpose. Gun nuts serve a similar purpose because if we want to be safe, all we have to do is let the gun nuts do their thing. It's probably only about 10, maybe 15% of us that are, are, are what I would consider true gun nuts, but we all don't have to be armed. Like when I say we should allow teachers to carry uh, at school, a common criticism I get is like, well, teachers already have to deal with so much. They have to deal with grading papers and they have to deal with making lessons. And they have to deal with discipline issues and they have to deal with parents. Now they have to deal with carrying a gun. No, no, no. If you don't want to, don't. But there are some teachers who love it. That's, the, that's their jam. They're gun nuts. They live for this. Let them do it. And I guarantee you the fact that the uh, mass shooter will have to worry about some of these teachers having guns will make this not a soft target. And if you see in manifesto after manifesto, they specifically choose gun free zones, whether it's a, a school or a movie theater, that there's a, a, a pattern that not only you notice out of coincidence, but they write about in their own manifestos. They don't tell you that part because it doesn't fit the narrative. But believe me, it's there. There's books about it. There's examples that you can go find. But when they talk about the going after ghost guns, they're intentionally conflating the criminals who aren't supposed to have guns anyway, who get a gun and scrape the serial number off so it can't be traced around and, and it's less likely to lead an investigators back to them with the best among us who are doing uh, who are pursuing their gun rights for the purposes of good, not evil. And you're not going to stop the criminals. The guys who are not stopped by laws against robbing and shooting and carjacking and brandishing and assault and battery and attempted murder, they're not going to be stopped by your ghost gun executive order. It's not like, hey, we need to go shoot up this block party. I don't know, man. Joe Biden said uh, the serial number's not on that gun, so it's illegal. That's a conversation that has never happened once in American history, yet... These attempts and this ideology persist. Why? Man, I don't know. I don't have an answer for everything. 800-288-WBAP. 800-288-9227. Uh, if you want to call in and you got some opinion on guns, I know some of you do. I'd love to hear from some of you gun nuts. If you make ghost guns, if you make 3D printed guns and you have some insight you would like to share, all right, share it with The James Show. 800 288 9227 this is The James Show. I'm James Parker on News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Hey there. Welcome back to The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Supreme Court's going to hear a case on Biden's attempt to outlaw ghost guns, which would, you know, it, it would really help America because if we got rid of all homemade ghost guns, I bet you crime would fall by at least a half a percent. What's your thoughts on this? 800-288-9227. 800-288-WBAP. To the phones we go. Paul in Kerrville. You're first up on the James Show. What do you think about this? Yes, sir. On that 19,000. So down in Houston and the communities down there, they limit people on how many 3D printed guns they can turn in on the buyback program. Okay. Because they found out it cost about $40 to make one. And a guy would walk up and drop two or three hundred on them for to resell back to them for two hundred dollars. Oh so, yeah, you know what? This guy is legendary in gun circles. This is this is the man who does the the thing that we joke about. Well, if you're going to give me two hundred bucks for a year. gun, then I'll three D print one for like sixty bucks and I'll go make money. And so this guy single handedly broke the gun buyback program of Harris County. 
uh, by doing this. They had to change all of their rules because one jerk, and I mean that in a, 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 as a compliment. You know, it's sometimes it's, not it's just one. It's a bunch. It's several of them. But that. But they're counting those numbers for the nineteen thousand. So, well, for the 19,000, they're being more dubious than that. They're counting any gun that has a serial number scratched off. So the overwhelming majority of the guns right. that they corrected from collected from crime scenes are not homemade guns. In fact, we don't even know if one of them was a homemade gun. We don't we 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 seriously, I can't find where 3D printed guns ha- have become a problem that's even noticeable. In fact, I don't know. Has one been used in a crime? Because these are not the criminals. The criminals are not out I'm, there. I don't know. I, it's, I've, never heard, I've never heard of one, but it fits in that category, and they just use that number to, to publicize. You know, and, and if, if they have such a good case, then why do they have to be so dishonest about it, right? I, I appreciate you calling in, Paul and Kerrville. Let's go to Karen and Cayuga. You're on the James Show, 820 AM, now 93.3 FM, WBAP. Hi. Hi, Karen. I think it's interesting. Uh, this thought came to me when you were talking about the serial numbers on guns. Liberal Democrats, whatever you want to call them, they don't want they don't want seri- they want serial numbers on weapons and guns and whatever else they can get a serial number on because it's a weapon. We have the two greatest weapons as American citizens, the right to bear arms and the right to vote. And our vote is just as much a weapon as a gun is. Why do they not want serial numbers, ID, citizenship, ID, to vote? Well, I would say it's even worse than that. Far more harm has been done to you, Karen, me, the host, and the guy listening to us from irresponsible voters and from irresponsible gun owners. I mean, like a third of... I agree. That's what I'm saying. Right. That's a third of our, our right income is gone. Is greater weapon. Right. We've had, we've had our, our rights infringed everywhere. You go, whether you're trying to go to church during COVID or if you try and drive down the street without the right kind of sticker on your windshield. I mean, we have all kinds of infringements going on for policies that make no sense constantly. And the same goobers mm-hmm. that think an island of, is going to tip over in, in Guam. Remember Hank Johnson said he thinks Guam might <laughs> tip over he's been reelected seven times since he said that so yes dumb voters huge huge problem in america uh 3d printed guns not so much i agree yeah yeah that's that's all let's go to the next caller thank you very much karen you're you're thank awesome thank you bye armandina in arlington you're on 820 a.m now 93.3 fm wbap so to get straight to the point um Federal agents can account for more than 1,400 ga- guns, uh, which was under the Operation Operation Fast and Furious. So, need, need I say more? I mean, the federal government has no needs to shut their mouth, has no business telling us anything about people and their ghost weapons. When they can't even account for weapons to begin with, that end up obviously having murdered, killed by uh, Border Patrolmen. So, uh, this it's ridiculous. Yeah, so they will they will give guns to the cartel at your expense. They will give guns to the Taliban at your expense. Yeah. They will give guns to random randos in the Ukraine at your expense, yeah. but you're not allowed to yeah. have one. Look, look, here's here's where yeah. it should be most suspicious because I love the road you're going down. This this is the right line of thinking because we don't have guns necessarily for self defense against against criminals. We don't have guns so we can go hunting or for sport. We have guns so we can shoot at the government when it gets out of control. That's specifically why yeah. it's written in there. That's why, why the word militia is in there. That's why we're well regulated yeah. in there. So the I don't understand why more people in Armandina aren't suspicious that the government's not trying to take away the guns that we actually use to kill each other. In the like 10,000 or 15,000, however many homicides that we, we had last year, gun homicides, almost all of them were done with pistols, but they don't want to take those away. They don't want to take away the guns that we're using against each other. What guns do they want to take away? The assault rifles, the AR-15s, the ones that they were giving to the people in in uh, Ukraine and the, the Taliban, the, the guns that you would use to fight your government, that's the only ones you want to take away? 
Oh, hell no. No, I'm not playing that game. This isn't about public safety. If they're not taking away the guns that we're using to shoot each other, it has nothing to do with public safety. They're taking the, the, away the guns that we would use to shoot them. And what yeah, else are they taking yeah. away with this? The ability to make your guns privately. If, if we maintain the ability to have goobers with a drill press in their garage to continue making guns, then it doesn't, it doesn't matter if they go shut down a few factories. We are still going to have the ability to arm ourselves and shoot at tyrants. But if they can take yeah. that away from us, then all they have to do is go close a handful of factories, you know, like a Remington and a Six Hour and whoever else is making guns around here. And they can shut off the gun industry pretty quick. They can't have us out there with this much power to make our own guns. And if when you put these two data points together and if you don't see it, you don't want to see it. Yeah, I agree. And we need to be on to them about many more other subjects. But, yeah, this one, they need to just keep it to themselves and let us be. Uh, as we're supposed to be here in America, uh, Liberty. Well, good to hear from you again, Armandina. Thanks for calling the James Show. And I was kind of hoping that we'd have someone arguing with me, like, James, you, you think it's okay if someone can just make a, a fully automatic AR-15 in their own gun without any sort of registration? Or Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. Well, it sounds like then you don't believe in registration at all. Then, yeah, that's right. I don't. It's, this is my fantasy land. This is what I dream about. Well, then if we don't have serial numbers and we can't do background checks, yes, you're starting to get it. Yes, that's what shall not be infringed means. No registration, no serial numbers, no background checks. We tried it. It didn't work. It's not working. And the fact that you're still complaining about guns is an implicit admission that it's not working. Thank you very much. What about McGruff the crime doll? Stop. Yes, grenade launcher. You can have a homemade grenade launcher. Of all the problems we have in America, wayward launched grenades are not in the top 10, not in the top 50, not in the top 1,000. I've lost a lot of friends. I've even lost friends to gun violence. None from a wayward launched grenade. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you're friends with Rambo or something. I'm not. Dale in Flower Mound, you're next up on The James Show. What do you think? Hey, James, how are you doing today? I am well, sir. Thank you for asking. Ghost guns could not, are not, all guns are ghost guns except for a few uh, revolvers. Because any one of the guns or rifles, I could take it, go out, go out and shoot somebody. And then all they have to do is take and uh, exchange the barrels for a new barrel with a new uh, rifling in it. And just throw away the old barrel after wiping it down. And they don't know that um, one from the other. Well, that, I mean, that's not going to help. You can also make it a ghost gun just by scraping off the serial number. But if you're going to maintain well, possession of the gun, it doesn't matter if you change the serial number or not. It, it, it matters when it gets in possession of the cops and they're trying to track down who did the shooting. But your, your point stands. It's just, no, I'm, I'm not saying the serial number gets changed. I'm saying you just change the barrel with the rifling and you just throw the barrel away and put a new barrel in. Almost every pistol, especially 9 millimeters and such, it's only a three-inch barrel that costs like about twenty-five to forty bucks, depending on the the type of uh, which gun you have, and then you got a brand new gun. Well, the serial number would still be on the receiver, right? The lower third. Right, but without the uh, without the rifling, you can't take and prove which gun that did the shooting. Oh, right, because you're talking about the the fingerprint that the rifling leaves on the the projectile. Oh, I see right. what you're saying. I'm sorry, I'm a little yeah, slow on the uptake. I'm not a gun nut. I can talk about this more fluently than a lot of people just from hosting talk radio shows. And I did grow up in the country like around guns, but I am not these people that know like all the parts and have built the gun from bear claws and sticks and whatever like some of my friends have. Because I have oh, friends. Well, I'm, yeah, but I've been hunting since I was uh, like five years old. So even though I lived in Massachusetts that when I was born and everything, I, don't, I left there uh, as soon as I uh, could, but... Uh, you know, because their their laws they they've completely destroyed the IR laws. Oh, dude! Now, so Massachusetts now, gun nuts. Did y'all did y'all see the online debate between Spike Cohen and David Hogg that was like a week or so ago? Did you know they did a, a gun debate? No, I did not. I wish I would have seen, seen that. Okay, I do love do, to have heard him. do you know who David Hogg is? Yep. Yeah, he's the, he's the kid from Parkland. Look, I, a lot of people bag on him really hard, and he is kind of like annoying and young. But I, I see sparks of hope in that guy, and he's a dude that's when he's 35 or 40 or so, he's probably going to convert to our side like you see some of these other guys doing, like like the, the Joe Rogans and Russell Brands and you know Bill Maher's kind of distancing himself from, from his previous crowd too. 
Uh, I, I see a little bit of hope, but David Hogg, the, the guy who is one of the most outspoken gun control activists right now in America, says his ideal gun control regime would be copying what Massachusetts does at the federal level. That's how bad Massachusetts laws are. That's all I need to know to know that what you just said about Massachusetts oh, yeah. laws is true. I mean, the one thing major, when I was a kid, when I was first around at five and able to carry a gun, you used to have an FID card to be able to carry a gun. That was unrevocable and for life. In about 1980, they, they revoked everybody's irrevocable FID card and made you, um, at first, it was $100 to get one every year. What did it let you do? And then they, uh, and just to carry a gun or, and buy ammunition. But the thing was, every year after that, they would take and slowly raise the uh, price up. So it got to a point where just to go hunting for a deer, it would cost you like $500. Well, I'm glad we got rid of that. Or wait, do uh, they well, still? Would, no, they still have all that. In Massachusetts? In Massachusetts, yeah. They still oh have. You have I had no idea. Card I had and, no oh, idea, Dale. Well, thank you it's for not teaching like me that. Here in Texas, that it's um, you know you can carry with no with no problem. Right. Just, yeah. No, well, that's one of the reasons why I got out of there. You're right, because government will slowly, you know, they start off just taking a toenail, and then by the time they're finished, they're taking both legs and uh, half of your uh, torso. Thank you very much, Dale and Flower Mound. Great call, sir. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too, bud. All right, good stuff there. Uh, hey, and uh, just on a common note, one thing we need to do to, to, to sort of bring everybody together across all ages and ideologies and, and demographics and, and really races, is it, it's communication. You know, the more conversations we have, the more, the better we understand what the other side is thinking and the more that they can dispel the idea that we're some racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, Nazi who's out there trying to kill Palestinian babies for sport or whatever the complaint is today. And, you know, sometimes I'm reminded of this lesson by, by people who are just on Instagram. This is uh this is one of our black neighbors, a fellow American on Instagram. Really? This is a lesson we all need to learn white people. I'm talking to you. Hey, white people. When would you gonna let us know about golden retrievers? Huh? When you gonna let us know about golden retrievers and how great they are, how sweet they are. How we, we y'all gonna let us know. These might be the sweet, these are the sweetest dogs. They're so sweet, so sweet. This is Zoe, y'all. Look at her. Y'all wouldn't go tell us? Y'all think all we want is Doberman pinches and, and pit bulls? We like golden retrievers, too. Look at, look, look how sweet she is. Her name's Zoe, y'all. Look how sweet she is. Y'all wanna go tell us? I mean, you guys, look at this. I wish the lighting was better, but look at this. L look at Zoe, y'all. Look how she's standing. Just... Just, just a mutt. Just a beautiful mutt. <laughs> hey, y'all need to start sharing more shit, man. What else y'all hold? This ain't just food. What else? There's a lot of stuff y'all been holding on to and y'all not trying to share. Oh, so. Oh, so. He's absolutely right. We didn't tell him about golden retrievers. And black people, that's that's our fault. We owe you an apology. I mean, we, we think we share enough. We told you about pumpkin spice. Didn't we? Didn't we bring you that? Didn't we give you the Beastie Boys? And no, there's still more we got to do. Just, just be vigilant. Be mindful. Share. Communicate. This is how we're all going to come together and solve all the world's problems. And if you don't know about Golden Retrievers, they are a great little snuggly dog. Okay? Just trying to right some wrongs here. Stick around. Coming up next, Mark Levin, Chris Crock, and then we'll do all this tomorrow. And uh, go ahead and put it in your phone now. I want to see you at WeatherCon. Saturday morning. If I got to be out there, you can at least come by and say hi on WeatherCon. And we got all the free giveaways. Go check it out, WBAP.com. This has been The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3.